Hey there viewers, my name is Trinsky and welcome back to another DCSS Sunday. Today we're going to be jumping right back into the usual attempts to win with every species here and unfortunately we're still a little bit hung up on halfling but still gonna have a whole lot of fun today I'm sure trying to get it off the ground because last week we unfortunately saw the end to Hal and Tri-Fling, the promising pair of runs that we had so far in our quest here. So we'll probably be continuing that lineage today. I had uh, a couple names in mind, but of course I'm always happy to take suggestions as well here. But yes, unfortunately, we have seen many, many halfling lives lost in the last couple of weeks here, but I believe today is going to be different. And we're going to get a heaping, a nice good old heaping of good luck for once and not have to fight our way out some of the uh, racial luck that halflings are supposedly known for. But what do we want to start out as today? Definitely our halfling self here. And I'm probably gonna even go back into the, the mill here, go back into the grind of Hunter because I don't think we've given it a decent shot yet, and on top of that, I also uh, don't feel that, or I feel rather, that it is a nice, quick, easy run as long as we're able to find a decent amount of ammunition for our sling, and maybe, just maybe, this time around, we can get a decent number of sleigh bonuses going, either through enchanting a sling up, or if we're lucky, some rings, artifact or otherwise, and... Hopefully we'll be able to just turn into the rock slinging machine gun that halflings or halfling hunters especially are supposed to be, but we'll see. Safid, you're not gonna believe it, but you have stumbled upon the exact one that I was thinking of. I was a bit torn between whether we'd run in as Bath or Sty, but I think Bath is the the one that called out to me the most here so seeing that come up happy to run in as baffling here and we'll hopefully do the the fling name justice once and for all here and get through in one piece i do like riffling as well hopefully we won't need another name so i'm not even gonna make a promise to use it in the next one because there won't be a next one. I'm pretty sure Baff is getting out of here in one piece. But here we go. In for another one here. Starting with slings again. And this time around, maybe we'll train up some early stealth since we did kind of enjoy having that effect last time around. Even though it also might be nice if for once here we were able to, uh, maybe get some decent armor like artifact armor that's a little bit heavier not too heavy mind you we want our evasion bonus but a little more defensive capability wouldn't be too bad this time around but i should also go through and make sure that we're picking up anything and everything that might come in handy here in the future and i should also before it leaves my mind once again here Drop a quick character dump and pop the seed up for anyone who wishes to play along with us at home. I think last week we started out on Hal, whose game seed was up already, but I don't think I ever got Tri's game seed up on screen. Unfortunately, just completely uh, slipped my mind as it were. This time around, let's get this out of the way here. Paste that bad boy in, make sure it's all in frame as well. Looks good. Just in case anyone wishes to play along at home, especially since, as we've uh, been mentioning here, this is going to be the luckiest run that we've ever seen on this halfling buddy here, I'm sure. So, might want to have that seed available just so you could also take advantage of the... 25 acquirement scrolls that we come across over the course of our journey, I'm sure. It has been a long time 
since we saw the the classic um, sign of luck that seemed to be making an appearance on every single run of ours, by which I just mean the artifact tridents have seemed to disappear lately. Not that we really want one here on Halfling. Fortunately, tridents aren't quite as good as they would be for others since they require two hands to use. I mean, in the early game here, it'd be pretty sweet still, I guess, because at the end of the day, we're not going to be able to use a shield for a while, even if we do find one, but we'll have to see what we get. And in terms of our luck so far, I don't know if I would call a D1 null with a spear lucky necessarily, but I mean, at least with the, the sling in hand here, we stand a chance. And then we just want to make sure to take out these weaponed folks. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have any rocks yet. I'd love to be using some of those instead. I say as we pick up a couple of rocks from this kobold, up to 29. That's good enough for me. Allows us to use the sling a bit more prodigiously in the early game here, not worry about completely running out of our sling bullet ammo because that is how we want to deal with most of the scarier threats at least for the, the starting part of the game here we'll see how it goes this is why halflings in general are pretty quick uh, relative to some others i mean hal is kind of the exception to all things was both the the unluckiest halfling to ever walk this earth, and by extension, also took a bit more time to get through some of the trickier situations there. But as long as we have enough rocks in hand here and a decent enough slain bonus that our sling is still relevant, I feel like we can get through this just slinging about. And an early plus one clape? Uh, clape? Not quite what I was going for. Cloak or cape brain, make up your mind. But a plus one cloak is a nice find early on, and I was about to say so is this hat here. But unfortunately, in the classic halfling fashion, it seems as of late, we found ourselves falling through a shaft. Kind of fortuitous in some ways, this is some pretty nice loot just hanging around. Do we want to worship Rue here? Rue is an interesting deity that requires you to sacrifice your ability to train certain skills whatsoever in exchange for bonuses. So it's not a horrible idea. In general, we're not getting into spellcasting on these characters, so we could just scrap all of those things and get a few bonuses out of that. Let's at least kneel and take a look, shall we? <laughs> an elven cloak? It definitely would, might be. The... Uh, a special little, I guess, what are they? My brain was immediately blanking. A brooch, little emblems, the leaf ones that they have. But I can definitely hope so, because if it is an elven cloak, it might help us blend into the dungeon environment here. Already rewarding us for training a little more stealth early game here. But let's take a look. You can exude an aura of power that intimidates your foes, or a power can strike those that harm you, which is interesting, but not something we can take full advantage of because we like to avoid all harm whatsoever. Even the smallest hit can uh, hurt mighty bad when you're just a wee little guy running through this big old dungeon. But with, let's see, you can heal your body and restore your magic. Lots of interesting things. I'm pretty sure the gathering your power to into a mighty leap is a super interesting skill that allows you to deal pretty ridiculous amounts of damage and also use it as an escape option. I'm not too familiar with Rue, but it is an option. Well, maybe keep it on the back burner for now, see which other deities we run into early on here. Because I wouldn't mind somebody who uh, synergizes well with our halfling start halfling hunter start even more so and will hopefully add us to successful victory today because this will be the, the last stream I get in before I head off on a short trip to visit with family and so it'd be nice to have it end in a, a good way wouldn't it are you listening game you want to give me some poetic justice here Ooh, here we go though an adder it's never much fun 
especially early on here. So let's hope we get a hit on the first couple, and we did indeed. Even killing the adder in one hit using the sling bullets, so I will happily take that one, and hopefully we get a similar result here. Not quite the one hit kill, but I'll also be very happy with that uh, outcome. So far, it's definitely a relatively easy start compared to what we've run into a lot of the time. Even in just regards to not running into any uniques that were carrying absolutely killer wands or uh, hacks of hobgoblins following Robin around. Also, I would say that the, the cloak and hat combo, sorry, I was stunned by the, the beauty of my own character here, because that hat and cloak combo, we're already getting a little bit into the fashion part of the game, which you love to see early on in a run. You want to get your statements out there for sure. And it gives us a good impetus to potentially switch out of our leather armor this time around, like we were mentioning earlier. Maybe find a... I'm trying to remember which sets of armor are either combinations of gold or black. You need to shop around a bit, find something nice. Okay, just a little bit of poison from a dart, not so bad. I mean, so we're just not even going to give Zom the time of day. You're right, I should have definitely at least given mention to Almighty Zom. I don't know if I'm going to be going on it with Bath here, even though it would be fitting if somehow, out of all things, we managed to pull ourselves out of this halfling road bump situation using a Zom run. I'm definitely usually one who will uh, happily start out as a Chaos Knight, but I will say that it's rare that we find ourselves uh, willingly following Zom. Unless I'm having fun, of course, because it is some of the most fun you can have in this game. And holy crap, got caught up between cow and crap there, couldn't make up my mind, but that 3D15 it's hitting a lot worse than I thought it would. I'll tell you that. Jeez Louise. So. Running away isn't fantastic. Could get a few steps at the very least. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> if I go one back. Oh, wait, yes, I can. Perfect. You don't have sight of me yet. And then there we go. Maybe should have used that opportunity to blind chug a potion, but I believe that Bath is defying all odds today, so we're just going to blow up this white imp at a 73% chance. Not even a single doubt in my mind. Oh, me oh my. Well, at least we got that one out of the way early. And here I was so confident in Bath's ability, the style, everything. Didn't even think for a moment that a white imp was early at d3 and that I should probably have been playing it a little more carefully there. But a good early reminder to the day to pay attention. Let's not slip up just because it's uh, we think it's an easy fight. We always got to be a little bit on our toes at the very least, but it works out because we did have another name suggestion from chat here to hop into another one. Oh me oh my. What a start. Maybe I should have given Zom a bit more of a chance there. I kind of jinxed myself and cursed us to a, a horrifying run, didn't I? Now the question is, do we want to switch it up? It just sucks because I feel like we haven't given a good representation of how good the sling can be as a three rune weapon. Usually you start running into the issues that we find if you try and take it later into the game to some of the the even stronger enemies than anything we've faced thus far with our halflings. But up until then, we can do some really amazing things. So I'm willing to, to give it one more shot. And I'll keep saying one more shot, I'm sure, until the end of time here. But I believe, Riffling, we're going to be the one to make it through. 
So the usual start that we're all familiar with at this point, we'll get slings and stealth going and make sure that we're picking everything up as well as, oops, let's make sure we're definitely picking up all those things. I'm not completely used to having some of these sling bolt stuff on by default, even after running this build for so long. I guess we could have given arcane marksman another shot and still shut off slings, but alack alas, here we are jumping into it. But we'll also remember off the bat here to drop the, the dump, because while I was wrong about Baf's run being the, the strongest run in existence, it's definitely going to be this run. I can feel it in my bones. No doubt whatsoever. So, let's pop this buddy in here, the new greatest seed in the world, and we're off. Brand new adventure. See how she goes. Hmm. Oh, we do have some early stones here, actually. It's lovely to see. Didn't even notice at first. We're getting the, the sling dream off the ground early, and there'll be a few more picked up from the kobold as well, which I'll take. Here goes nothing. We're going to be looking for a nice early d2 shrine to i'd love if we found an early goes egg or something like that just somebody solid who will provide a lot of auxiliary benefit to us not to mention that i'm extremely comfortable with and have gone the most playtime in and most likely with but we'll switch to sling bullets for a weapon buddy like we do in the early game here and Ooh, already an early hat. Could it be as good as last run? That's the unfortunate part about the end of Bath there was that so much of my comfort level early on there was based on how much AC we gained. We got two out of the hat as well as two out of the cloak, which is a whole lot. One may even say a baffling amount for the early game, but unfortunately I didn't quite register in our first run of the day here that that ice imp damage is going to completely bypass that, wearing only about our cold resistance, and just hit real hard. So this time around, we got to remember that there are different types of defenses, Brain. We know this. We've been playing this game for not only years before we started streaming, but now we've been streaming this even for a couple months. <laughs> Let's see here. A plus one cloth helmet is equally as good as just a, a regular old one here. So we'll pop it on and see. Hmm. It's a bit plainer, the black, but we'll carry it around for now in case it matches something later. For now we'll go with this nice flamboyant wizard cap. Try and offset our, our stealthiness with a little bit of flair in our personal lives, you know? But, okay, too injured to fight recklessly, right. Let's stop just auto-hitting tab in a dangerous situation here because we should try our best to stay alive. I think I'm slipping into my old kind of mentalities of back before I started streaming this game. Almost always in an early fight like this, I'm just gonna hold down tab until either I die or they do. And if tab stops working because we're too close to death, just hold down a directional key. White Imp showing up once more as a little piece of revenge. Why do we keep getting Ice Blast Wands? The one wand that won't really help us against that specific enemy. Rough stuff. Let's maybe mark this buddy off temporarily. Take a look around. Yeah, very much too bad. Save it for earlier. I agree. Oh, let's not keep equipping ourselves with a that in view we are gonna put on some shoes again we're always working with the assumption that these are specially made bespoke halfling shoes tops cut out got to make sure we don't irritate those feet too much there we go natasha showing up again uh, 
and should be alright this time. But I guess, yeah, save it if you miss the, the exact end of baffling when you walked away. The reason why we're giving that white imp so much of a wide berth is for uh, our forefather's death. We will get revenge, but we'll have to make sure we come back when we're strong enough to for sure get revenge for Bath. I'm sure it's the same white imp, but recognize them anywhere. And this, I think, is the last of Natasha's lives. Oh gosh, she summoned one. Oh no. Don't do that. Hmm. What's the range on this bad boy? Six. I mean, if we just hit it a couple times with sling bolts, it should die. We were quite unlucky, I think, with Bath there at the end. It was just a couple of tabs that got us into that situation because unfortunately, it is just two hits to bring us down to four health. Not great. I would like to just hit Natasha. I mean, this works. This won't do anything to the white imp, but if this deals a decent amount of damage to Natasha, it'll still work out. Oh, and it still kills a white imp? Oh, would you look at that. So it turns out I was underestimating the overall power of the Ice Blast Wand against these early enemies. Good to know for the future here, because that would have actually saved Bap's life if I had rolled the dice in that direction instead. Because I believe that we tried to use a Disintegration Wand, but we still had an Ice Blast Wand in our inventory. Don't know how the percentages, the probabilities weigh out versus each other, but still good to know. And early scale mail, we might as well try it on. Hmm. Do we want to try some early armor this time around? We have been sticking with uh, our leather until quite late in the game a lot of them which is always tempting but at the end of the day we could try for yes still taking advantage of evasion and especially the racial bonus to evasion we get for being a halfling but let's maybe not um, completely hinge everything on just that fact we may as well try out actually uh, Having a bit of AC, sorry, blanking for a bit as I worked out in my head if this was worth it, if I was being stupid engaging on this white imp, but after it went so well with the summon one, I'm feeling cocky even if I shouldn't be, and now they're in range? Okay, they are in range. So we did hit them once, we probably could shoot them down, but let's just get the guaranteed hit without a chance to evade even. Perfect. And then we can just get rid of this all exclusion here, we got early revenge for Bath. Maybe proving once and for all that I just mistimed my uh, luckiest run judgments by exactly one run. Obviously, this is the one that uh, is actually going to be the the one. Okie dokie, switch to our sling bolts for the, the snack and probably for the rest of the, the orcs here as well. It's nice to line them up as much as we can, even though we're not using a piercing weapon in our sling here. We still get to take advantage of the fact that if we ever miss shots, they at least have a chance to also hit the enemies behind, which isn't too bad. And an early buckler, you definitely love to see. So that's going to be a quick focus on shields here in the early game. Let's immediately set the target to, uh, oh, it's only 5.6. Probably just gonna put that on right away. And the, the shield even got the memo that blue is the name of the game for this run. So you love to see it. And let's hope that we can get a few more nice pieces of equipment coming here. There we go, our first unique of the game in Purgy once more. Or Purgy? 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 Who knows? <laughs> you can't ask them, unfortunately. They're not up to talking too much in their starved uh, rage here. So, hmm. 
Don't have anything that's too useful in terms of usable or like consumable offensive things here. Ice Blast Wands, unfortunately, we do need a little bit more space. Could try and fight a tiny bit. How much do you hit? Nine, four twice, 17. Hmm. At least until we take one bad hit. Let's try it out. Okay, that's two nice hits. That's one kind of rough hit. Come on, we're pushing it now. <laughs> When do we don't, I guess. But there we go, just a few more sling bullets. We find our way making it through the first unique fight of the game. We'll have to see who else and what else shows up. Ooh, let's definitely pop around the corner here, limit our visibility to that orc priest as much as we can. Still not gonna be great here as we see them coming in now. Ouch, I think that was a mixture of Bio and the snake hitting us. Hmm. Again, the corridor kind of biting us in the butt here. Normally you want to fight everything in corridors in this game. The one-on-one -on -one advantage, always great. But in this situation, it'd be nice if we had something piercing, like an acid wand, but it'd be much better off. Hmm in a slightly more open space, just where we're able to sneak by a shot. And we're so close to getting out of the Orc Priest line of sight for just a moment, please. Just a, a second game. Hmm. Could keep running, but I think we still die pretty quickly. We might actually still need to just stumble into quaff iodine a heal wounds or something like that it's unfortunate you know what let's start early shall we We've got a potion of magic now it could take a smite unfortunately a oh, potion of degeneration is not what you want to see but last two stack potion it's got to be heal wounds right no potion of cancellation Okay, so nothing good, nothing bad. Almost would have been better off going the scroll route at the end of the day here, because I think a teleport would have saved us. We've survived more turns than I thought possible. <laughs> oh, don't you hate it when the luck works in the wrong moments. Keep going? Okay, that was Ambrosia. And now we're confused. But healing, just heal enough. We got a potion of might, and we did gain back a decent chunk of health from the Ambrosia. Let's keep chugging while we have the uh, Ambrosia going. There we go, we're no longer confused, which means we're no longer healing. And we're mighted up, so I guess just have to start slinging here. We're not at a great point of health we only have one potion i guess so if things start to go badly it's not like there are too many options to go between i would almost like it if the adder kept dodging please <laughs> no okay there we go might actually come out of this one and also at the end of the day it seems like we're just blindly quaffing in a panic here but nay nay we're just simply taking the advice of our uh viewers that we've had previously who have been mentioning that I have a bad habit of waiting a bit too long to ID everything and they're totally right so that's all we were doing there of course it's making sure to uh quaff some potions early here <clears throat> nothing else and actually on that note I say that uh as a bit of a joke here but at the end of the day I do want to potentially start trying to be a bit more consistent about an ID and it's funny because I think a lot of my playstyle is informed by the kind of stuff that I mentioned earlier today where if I am going into a run on my own here off camera I would back in the day just always rush through the early fights because at the end of the day if I die in the first like seven levels of the dungeon i'm not wasting too much time and i'm getting to see some of the the fun stuff that could possibly show up versus 
here on stream, we're definitely do doing our best to be a bit more consistent and try and get some victories here. Especially since we had a, such a good start to the uh, win with every species series here with our four victory streak, which is something that I never thought that I would get playing DCSS in general, much less playing it in front of people. So it'd be nice to see that again, you know? Here we go. Early knolls, always a bit of a pain in the butt, especially when they're carrying a buckler of their own, but not too bad. And we pick up Wand of Random Effects, which I don't want to have to be resorting to at any point in time here. It's a bit of a rough one. Let's use one Ice Blast Charge, make sure we keep ourselves out of trouble, out of any more sticky situations here. I am betting that that last potion in our inventory there, silver? Yes, yeah, silvery potions. We have three of them, so it's fairly likely, I think, to be the heal wounds potions we were looking for earlier. And we also didn't waste any haste potions in our survival earlier, so that might be nice for the future. Hopefully we'll see a decent number of them show up at the very least. Here we go. Let's start upstairs first. Wear rings and the necklace. Perfect. Guardian Spirit is really nice early on here. That'll get us through some of the the issues we had earlier against things like Smite, where the extra health health pool is priceless, I guess. But there we go. No cursed equipment, but that's fine. Now we can go down and we'll start reading some of these scrolls here. We do get scroll of identify right away. Love to see it. Let's check. Wow, those three silvery potions are actually potions of brilliance, which is unfortunate because I don't think we'll be using those. I think as we were lovingly put it last time, uh, brilliance and magic potions are for nerds. <laughs> but I guess that was either Hal or Try. Maybe Riff is a bit more in touch with their uh, bookish side here. Even if they don't want to cast magic, they're a bit more open to it at the very least. Got to roleplay these a little bit. Add some flavor to each character so that it hurts that much more when you die in an unfortunate, stupid, painful way. All for the drama. Off we go. More degeneration potions. Woo! If only we were playing this game 10 years ago and we were able to throw that at enemies, turning it into a cloud of degeneration. Phantom, eh? We only have eight sling bullets left. Be a good chance that it, they evade us. Jeez, dealing no damage even when we do hit. Love to see that. That's supposed to be our strong weapon. But stones are actually doing all right, so there we go. Not too shabby. We did manage to find some more sling bullets even. Would you look at that? Not very many, but at least enough to hopefully hold us over. And an early trog altar guess Trog also got absolutely no recognition when we saw them in the last run with that. Uh, we could go with Trog. I was even thinking that if we didn't keep trying to push our way through a hunter run, keep slamming my head into this brick wall time and time again, I probably would lean towards playing around with something like Berserker. I was hoping to save the uh, evasion-based tiny berserkers for uh, spriggans and kobolds one or the other definitely kobold i think was where we kind of landed on talking with a few viewers here and on youtube so it's hoping to save it for that but could be an interesting route at the very least gets by a lot of the issues that we have on these squishier characters where in the early game here we're struggling to get through any like out of depth monsters or stronger things okay what is with all these white imps you're telling me it's out, absolutely out of control i think even zot i think couldn't argue that they should call in a bit of a an exterminator pest service here because the white imp population is just out of control but on the other side of the coin, 
at least Riff is getting the the satisfaction of murdering all of these um, entities that I don't know are they all related I was trying to think are they all like siblings of the one who killed our father in some way I'm sure each and every white imp killed gives Riff either more satisfaction or just more like unbridled bottled up anger that uh, is just gonna keep adding up and adding up in pressure until he eventually boils over but one way or the other we're getting something out of it right and we got an artifact sling this run so maybe we had to throw a few halfling lives away in order to get a truly amazing run and would you look at that a plus five vorpal double pips of will dex plus three sling holy crap so Vorpal is nice because it doesn't have we don't have to worry about resistances in terms of uh, elemental damages, I guess. Still have to worry about general AC, of course, but a plus five will help with that a little bit. And the dull pips of will are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and so laughing at the, the Vorpal sling, I'm guessing largely due to the same thing. Because what did we find last week? It was a, a Vorpal whip or i guess that almost made slightly more sense it had to be something more blunt than that right but yes we're continuing to uh defy the classic properties of these blunt weapons but let's switch that over to a again <laughs> okay so this powerful ancient weapon is named jim hi jim yes indeed jim here Quite a powerful, another sentient weapon, I'm sure, too. Likes to go by Jimbo, actually, but only if you're their wielder, so I guess you're not allowed to call them that. Just their closest of pals. And here we go. First ogre is a spiked club ogre in a room full of hobgoblins. What fun. What joyous fun. So, luckily, we did pick up an acid wand. And apply some early damage to this ogre before they get a chance to even get up to us and there we go taking it out in one fell swoop you're getting a whole bunch of experience there oh me oh my not too bad finally recovering from the degeneration potion that we accidentally chugged earlier which is you know nice always love it when the a uh, note free to natural feeding of your intellect strength and agility ends must be quite a relief to come out of that stupor state but okie dokie let's drop this leather armor we'll keep no we'll drop the helmet We're, we've settled into a bit of a, a style here and let's check out the other ring that we managed to pick up on this part of our journey and ring of flight not exceptionally useful but We'll take it. I also haven't been paying attention to melee weapons. I'm sure something better than this plus zero short sword has come up. I guess what we can do here is a quick find of short blade. Should do the trick. Turns out nothing better has shown up and in fact just demonstrably worse things. <laughs> Love to see it. So we'll keep an eye out for something to potentially replace our melee weapon here, but hopefully you, another one of you, die, bastard. <laughs> you get him, Riff. You get him. And okay, second and third unique showing up here. Duvesa and Dowin? It's Dowin or something, right? I guess I always say them the other way. So down and Duvesa rings a bit more. You got to go alphabetically. Otherwise, it just gets confusing. But 36 health isn't too much. Should be able to take her out pretty quickly. The issue, though, being that I don't like to take out Duvesa first most of the time. So if you kill Duvesa, then she... Then Dowin gains a lot of magical abilities. I think gains more spells or just a lot more damage to his spells. Versus killing Dowin, you get Dervesa to rage, which can still be scary, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, 
you can ride it out. Okay, let's see here. Throw Icicle 3D11. It's painful. Gotta say. I guess the plus side is that he's pretty squishy. So, chance of evading our Wand of Acid are a little bit higher than I would like. So Wand of Ice Blast, it might be. Just do some undodgeable damage. I think one or two hits of this kills Dowin. So that's one. Yeah, we'll go with one more of that. Perfect. Not too shabby. Run over to the stairs. We made a decent amount of noise here, so we might draw some attention. But I wanted to do potentially a little bit more identifying. Guess what? We are out of ID scrolls, so we have identified those. So six teleport scrolls. Or oh, right, remove curse we haven't found yet. That's what I'm missing. So probably the four and six stacks of scrolls are probably remove curse and teleportation one way or the other. And then we have a stack of two and a stack of one. Hmm. Always weighing out the chances of it being something useful, like a blink scroll. But, solve that mystery by just picking up another identify scroll, so we can just figure out. The stack of two scrolls is teleport, which means we actually have a decently high numbered stack of a fancy scroll. Or at least a mid-tier fancy scroll. Let's read the four, shall we? Enchant weapon. Okay. Unfortunately, nothing to use them on yet, but that will come in handy. We cannot enchant our artifact weapon, but if we find a branded sling, we could have an alternative that's just slightly overall damage or has a specific brand that is, you know, useful in certain situations here. Or we can, if we find a nice melee weapon, we can also try and scroll it up early because the name of the game this run is going to be to try and get some early slay this time around for once and for all here. Hey Brain, how's it going? I actually heard and saw that you've been playing a bit of Wilder Myth lately. Have you been enjoying that game? That's one that I haven't watched too much of because I'm trying not to spoil it for myself. I don't actually know if you can spoil it though because I don't know if the stories are unique or if they're predetermined in some way, but such a cool game. I've heard that it gives really um, D&D-like vibes playing through it in the kind of immersive storytelling or emergent storytelling even that uh, comes out of the characters that you play. Yeah, great fun. Nice. Good to hear. Let's see. Plus four Falchion? Hmm. Oops. <laughs> Let's not try and evoke flight, shall we? Switch over to Sling Bolts to take out the Sky Beast before it gets invisible. It's not too shabby. And this isn't a short blade, but I think I will switch to a plus four for the time being here, as our backup at the very least. Because fortunately, if we have enough stones that we've been able to rely pretty heavily on our Sling, Especially the fact that we got this early artifact sling, I guess. Might also play into it just a little bit. Ooh, what else do we have? Plus one dagger. Cursed plus five longsword. Hmm, that's tempting. Base attack delay is slightly higher, but... Would deal nice damage. There are things that you can learn about how events go, but there are things that may be different in the background to make the event play out in an alternate way. Okay, so not too bad. Maybe some little procedural things. Still very, very cool game from what I've heard. A little bit I've heard while trying to keep myself spoiler free. There are too many good games these days. It's a, it's a real problem. I need um, a fund that will support my gaming addiction. Or I can just wait for the, the celebrations to come around, usually for like Christmas from some of my relatives, I'll get some Steam gift cards and be able to save those up for the sales as they come around and pick up whatever has been catching my eye over the last while. 
Okay, how much damage do you do, Yak? Exactly 18. That's our health. How fun. But I think we'll do one acid strike. I don't think they can actually hit the full 18 with the guaranteed damage reduction on the armor we're wearing, but 